cut off from the outside world by a narrow but treacherous span of icy Atlantic water. Once, many years ago, a man named Nelson Mandela was sent there in a boat from Cape Town Harbor for life. Robin Island, the maximum security jail where Nelson Mandela and other enemies of the state were imprisoned during the long, bitter years of apartheid rule in South Africa. Today, the island stands as a symbol of resistance to those long years of injustice and oppression, a symbol of a nation's struggle, the rock on which a new and just society is being built. For no prison walls, no jail door, no island fortress, no police force, no army, no political system or power of the state can ever be strong enough to suppress a nation's ideals, its people's beliefs their cherished dream of freedom. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream. In the 1960s, in a nation divided by racial strife, Martin Luther King was a man with a dream, a dream so strong and powerful that not even an assassin's bullet could rob it of its spirit and momentum. Today, Martin Luther King's dream of civil rights and equal opportunities for African Americans is no longer just a dream. South Africa. 38 million people live in this land of harsh and beautiful contrasts. 38 million people share its hopes and fears for the future. Generations of South Africans have lived here in the shadow of inequality, racial conflict and intolerance. But within that shadow lies a much greater force, the desire for freedom, the dream of a united, prosperous and peaceful South Africa where all South Africans have an equal stake in their future. Today, Nelson Mandela, jailed for almost three decades for his role in the struggle against apartheid, is a free man. Soon, South Africa's first ever democratic elections will pave the way for government of, by, and for the people. But votes alone are not enough to build a nation, nor are dreams. It is a ceaseless striving after justice, an unstoppable act of clamoring after a better life for the majority of its people that has brought South Africa to this moment of transition. That spirit is not still. This is not the end of the road. For a nation to rise up from the ashes of its past, for its people to regain their freedom, their pride and their dignity, the only course of action is action itself. Action for change, for progress, for empowerment. Action for a new South Africa. In the 1980s, when South Africa was in the iron grip of emergency rule, when freedom and democracy were no more than a dream for the majority of its people, an international campaign for action was launched, calling on the freedom-loving people of the world to support the struggle against apartheid by applying pressure where it would hurt most, on the economy of the nation. An economy rooted in and built on a set of racial policies that enrich the few at the expense of many. The government had closed all channels of peaceful protest and intensified uh, the brutal policy of apartheid. In that situation, we were left with no other alternative except to call upon the international community to apply pressure by isolating South Africa, by withdrawing investments, and uh, by uh, stopping any form of trade or financial support uh, to South Africa. But the idea, of course, was not uh, to try to destroy the economy of the country. It was to force the
the regime to change its policy. Uh, our intention was to ensure that South Africa sits down and talks to the legitimate leaders of the country to resolve our problems by peaceful methods. The call did not go unheeded. By withdrawing investment, by imposing sanctions, the governments of America and many other nations helped to turn the apartheid state into an island, alone in the world. Slowly, the walls of the fortress began to crumble. Slowly, as the swell of popular opinion began to rise within South Africa and abroad, the tide of history began to turn. It was uh, always inspiring to note that uh, the ideas for which you sacrifice were very much alive. Uh, our people in the country were on their feet, remained on their feet and fighting back. The international community was supportive. There was a string of uh, VIPs uh, that uh, came to the island uh, to see us. And uh, one became aware that uh, there were people who cared. These were the source of tremendous inspiration and encouragement. And the certainty that uh, whatever difficulties were still confronted, the day of liberation was certain to come. The unbanning of the African National Congress and the release of its leadership from imprisonment in 1990 was a decisive turning point in the history of the struggle against apartheid. A point of no return. Today, as South Africa is poised on the brink of a small miracle of reconciliation and reconstruction, the seeds of a vision of peace and democracy have been planted. International support, economic sanctions and disinvestment proved to be powerful weapons in the battle to bring social and political change to South Africa. I have a dream. Wherever the people's human rights are trampled upon, let freedom ring. We will never... Our indebtedness to those people who supported us during the most uh, difficult times in our struggle is beyond words. We will ever remain grateful to them for their support. We are today getting uh, new friends because uh, we were able to stand on our feet and fight back. And we did so because of the inspiration we got uh, from the support uh, of the international community and countries who decided not only to be vocal in condemning the repression, but uh, who actually went out of their way to do certain things to make sure that South Africa is forced to abandon its apartheid policy. With the abandonment of apartheid, South Africa's true potential can now emerge. It is a land rich with promise. The rugged grandeur of its landscapes, its geographic diversity, and the unrivaled profusion of indigenous flora and fauna make it a world-class tourist destination. However, tourism in South Africa has not realized a fraction of its growth potential. Beneath its surface lies a still richer bounty. A treasure house of minerals, it produces more than half the world's gold and most of its chrome, diamonds and platinum. World markets are opening once again and there is a strong global demand anticipated for strategic minerals. An industrial powerhouse, South Africa processes iron and steel, manufacturing everything from textiles to chemicals to motor vehicles. With ports, harbors, rail and road links, and a transmission grid to power a subcontinent, the country has a massive infrastructure, providing a sub-Saharan springboard to the rest of Africa, and the bedrock for huge investment. South Africa, a sleeping giant among developing nations, is shaking off its chains. 
The foundations for freedom are being laid. The law now says all people are equal. But post-apartheid society is not going to be legislated into existence. It is already happening. There's a growing realization within the country that only through economic growth and empowerment can the terrible distortions of the past be corrected. Only through the creation of jobs and developing the economy will the enormous potential of this land and all its citizens be realized. This social and economic transformation is already being forged by the rapidly growing community of interest between emerging political forces, business and labor. However, a vital component in creating a competitive, world-class economy is foreign investment. Now, more than ever, South Africa needs the support of the world to awaken the sleeping giant, to rebuild the nation, to build on its huge storehouse of resources and its potential for greatness. A foreign investor can come in as partners for the local businessmen, and in so doing, they can first of all earn a good return, but second of all, they can play a key role in this reconstruction of the country. In other words, they can redirect their investment into areas that they feel strongly about, and at the same time get a return. So they can be involved in assisting the black entrepreneur, they can be involved in housing, school care, health care, the sky's the limit. They really have tremendous opportunities to not only generate wealth, but also to contribute to the redevelopment of a country. Of course, one is very pleased indeed that sanctions are now going to be lifted, that South Africa will once again have access to world markets, and that uh, she'll be able to raise money from the International Monetary Fund and from the World Bank, which might set the stalled economy going again so as to provide jobs, which I believe is the only way in which we'll have enduring peace in South Africa. Business cannot exist in isolation. For it to prosper, it requires a healthy, peaceful environment. All over South Africa, there are a growing number of corporate and community-driven development programs dedicated to reconstruction and the empowerment of people through socio-economic initiatives in the workplace and the community. Ordinary people, striving quietly, with enormous energy and goodwill, to make things work. Our hope is that transnational companies will adopt an investment philosophy which does not aim at maximizing profit in the short term only, but which aims at making certain that the country will enjoy a degree of stability that will guarantee they are trading opportunities for all time in this country. We are hoping to attract the type of international investment that sees an investment in us as a country in, in developing the potential of our people and our economy to, to become a vibrant economy. We are looking for the type of investment that is prepared to put money and resources into sustainable economic development that really will transform the African continent from being a begging bowl of the world to one of being a vibrant and coherent economic giant amongst the, the giants of the world. Decades of institutionalized discrimination have left their mark. In the past, black South Africans were excluded from any meaningful stake in the economy. Black empowerment is a key to economic reconstruction and societal healing. My hope with the lifting of sanctions would be that companies that are going to invest in South Africa should give specific and special consideration to black business because without blacks being empowered, particularly by overseas investors, the future of South Africa will not be bright. Foreign investment has a key role to play in helping to build a new South Africa. Under a new government, elected by the majority of South Africa's people, foreign investors will be guaranteed protection of their assets without fear of expropriation or a clamp on the movement of profits and dividends. Given an independent central bank and conservative monetary and fiscal policies, I think that we could experience the same kind of boom that Mexico has experienced in the last decade. We have the markets, we have the infrastructure, we have the people. South Africa has the potential to become an industrial powerhouse 
and the dynamo of development on the African subcontinent. Investing in South Africa and uh, helping our economy to grow, you are not only helping the people of South Africa, you are helping the people of the whole Southern African region, which uh, has no less than 120 million people. You are opening up a wide market which uh, can be used by investors and traders from all over the world. The reconstruction has begun. Across the country, there is a groundswell of optimism, affirmation, energy for change. South Africans want peace. South Africans want the freedom to determine their own future. They want this nation to work, but they cannot do it alone. Dear friends, you supported us in the dark days of apartheid. Now, victory is within reach. Become collaborators with us for prosperity for all in South Africa, which will indeed be prosperity for our subcontinent and maybe even for the continent of Africa. The era of sanctions and punitive action is over. Now is the time for renewal. Now is the time to invest in the country's future, to share in a dream as it becomes reality. The Transitional Executive Council, as well as its sub-councils, have now been installed. A date of election has now been set, and we now call upon the international community to lift sanctions, uh, with the exception of uh, the embargo, the oil and arms embargo. But all other sanctions, the trade sanctions and financial sanctions, we now call upon the world to lift them and to start a trading with South Africa. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Get ready, man, man, prepare for your freedom. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Listen to these voices.